This is your daily Facts Matter update, and I'm your host, Roman, from the Epic Times. And now let's begin today's discussion over in Canada, where the government is currently in the process of waging an all-out financial war against the trucker protesters, as frankly well as anyone else who supports them. However, before I give you the actual developments, I would like to share with you something that happened in the year 2020 as sort of a juxtaposition with what's happening today. Back in December of 2020, there was a large protest of farmers over in the country of India. Those farmers, they were specifically protesting against three laws that were passed by their federal government, laws that the farmers were claiming were enriching the large corporations while at the same time hurting the small farmers. And so the farmers peacefully marched to the capital with many of them bringing their trucks, their tractors, as well as their trailers along with them. This is already all starting to sound rather familiar, isn't it? And back then, wouldn't you know it, the first foreign leader to voice his opinion on this matter, meaning the first head of state outside of India to chime in, was Canada's Justin Trudeau. Here's what he said back in December of 2020. Quote, let me remind you, Canada will always be there to defend the rights of peaceful protesters. We believe in the process of dialogue. We've reached out through multiple means to the Indian authorities to highlight our concerns. This is a moment for all of us to pull together. And those beautiful comments, well, they bring us right back to the present day. Because as you are likely aware, after the Trudeau government invoked the Emergencies Act, well, they began to crack down hard on the trucker protest. At first, the Ottawa police began to hand out these notices to the protesters who were on the ground. And these notices, they said this in part, quote, you must leave the area now. Anyone blocking streets or assisting others in the blocking of streets are committing a criminal offense and you may be arrested. You must immediately cease further unlawful activity or you will face charges. Then, shortly afterwards, the police began to make good on their promise. Videos began to circulate online, maybe you've seen some of them at least, showing swarms of armed police pushing protesters back, smashing truck windows, arresting protesters on gunpoint, and even trampling over top protesters on horseback. Now, on that last point, the, regarding the horses, one of the women who was actually trampled, you can see her there up on screen, she's the one with the walker, she was sent to the hospital with a shoulder injury, and she eventually made a full recovery. However, it's rather ironic that for a protest that is being branded by the government as essentially a white supremacy summit, well, it was interesting to learn that this protester, the woman who was trampled by the police horse, is actually an indigenous elder who just disagrees with the vaccine mandates. You might look at the situation and you might be sympathetic to everyone involved, maybe even to the police officers themselves, who you might assume are just being forced to do their jobs and violently break up the protest. But that does not appear to be the case. How do we know? Well, a publication called Rebel News. They were able to obtain a leaked text thread between the Canadian police officers, and frankly, based on the text messages at least, they seem to be enjoying what they're doing. Here are some of the text messages that the police officers were sending back and forth. And please note, I hid the names and phone numbers of the officers so that their private information wouldn't be released. Here's what they said. Time for the protesters to hear our jackboots on the ground. To which one of his colleagues replied, whoa, 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 whoa. This is a kinder and gentler Royal Canadian Mounted Police. To which he then replied, okay, we can give out free hugs and unicorn stickers. And then in another one of the exchanges, you can see that one of the police officers shared the video of the horses trampling on the protesters. And here were some of the responses from the other officers. Wow, that's awesome. We only think we're living the dream. That's what we need to do. Just watch that horse video. That is awesome. We should practice that maneuver. Agreed. Put me back on gyro, which I imagine is the name of the horse, and they will be served. Ha ha. That is rather amazing. However, it's perhaps understandable why these police officers are enjoying doing their job so much, because just maybe they are listening to their own politicians, and perhaps by doing so, they think that they are fighting actual Nazis. What do I mean by that? Well, listen to this Canadian member of parliament suggest that not only are the freedom protesters Nazis, but that also the sound of a truck horn actually means hail Hitler. Take a listen. How many guns need to be seized? How much vitriol do we have to see of Hong Kong, which is an acronym for Hail Hitler, do we need to see by these protesters on social media? And along that line, a woman by the name of Tamara, who is one of the main organizers of the Freedom Convoy, she was recently arrested by the police and she's currently being denied bail. She's currently being threatened with 10 years in prison. Now, thus far, we have discussed both the narrative warfare as well as the police crackdown that the protesters have been facing. 
But what appears to be even more severe, and what likely has far-reaching implications, is the financial warfare that the state is waging against not only the protesters, but also anyone who supports the protesters. And to begin to understand what the implications of this actually are, well, here's what the Ottawa chief of police, here's what he had to say about what his force is about to do. If you are involved in this protest, we will actively look to identify you and follow up with financial sanctions and criminal charges. Absolutely. We, we, this investigation will go on for months to come. Now, in that statement, he mentioned that if you are involved in the protest, they will find you and financially sanction you. But what does that actually mean? Does it refer to only people who are physically there on site in Ottawa? Well, that appears to not be the case. Here is, for instance, what a conservative member of the Canadian Parliament wrote on Twitter in regards to what's actually happening with these financial sanctions. Brienne is a single mom from Chilliwack, which is a city, working a minimum wage job. She gave $50 to the convoy when it was 100% legal. She hasn't participated in any other way. Her bank account has now been frozen. This is who Justin Trudeau is actually targeting with his Emergencies Act orders. And I suspect that this type of financial warfare will only escalate given the fact that Give, Send, Go, which is of course the fundraising platform that the truckers were using, well, it was recently hacked and all of the names, addresses, and dollar amounts of the donors are now floating around online. In fact, people are now making Google Maps, you can see one of them up on screen right there, where all of the donors are represented as pins on the map. And of course, the intrepid mainstream media in our country is looking to get to the bottom of how this could have possibly happened. For example, the Washington Post is now contacting people whose donation info was leaked and who gave as little as $40 to the truckers to ask them why they did so. And attached to that tweet, you can see an example of an email from the Washington Post, which has this question. Can you call or reply to this email to share what motivated you to contribute to the campaign? Now, really spend a quick moment to take this in. Hackers breached the private information of tens of thousands of donors over on Give, Send, Go, which is, of course, an illegal act. And the legacy media in this country, instead of condemning the hack or trying to get to the bottom of who actually conducted it, well, they are instead now harassing the actual donors, asking them to justify their donations. This is just the world we're living in where the government, alongside the police force, the banking institutions, and the legacy media outlets, they all work in concert to attack those who they don't agree with. And frankly, don't expect this to end anytime soon, because as Ronald Reagan once famously said, quote, nothing lasts longer than a temporary government program. And indeed, wouldn't you know, just two days ago, Canada's finance minister, she came out and she said that these financial sanctions must be extended permanently. Take a listen. I believe do need to be expanded to cover crowdsourcing platforms uh, and uh, payment platform and their payment providers. Uh, so that's that is something that we need to do and we will do and that needs to be in place permanently. And so frankly, what this reveals is an extremely concerning development, the likes of which we very rarely see in the Western world. Because think about it, whether it's America, Canada, Australia, Europe, etc., one of the bedrock principles of our Western societies is the concept of property rights. That's one of the main reasons that, for instance, rich Chinese people, they buy property in Canada and America rather than in China. Because after 25 years, well, your property here in America will still likely be yours because we have property rights. However, this episode in Canada, well, it's revealing the fact that your money in your bank account, which you, of course, assume is yours, well, it's one piece of legislation away from being frozen and confiscated by the state without any due process. And so in terms of what this will actually mean for the future of Canada as well as the Western world, well, only time will tell. Although, frankly, what you're actually beginning to see across Canada right now is a spreading of these protests in many different cities as people are witnessing what's happening in Ottawa and deciding to stand up against it. If you'd like to read more about anything that we've discussed thus far regarding Canada, I'll throw all those links into the description box below this video for you to check out. And all I ask in return is that you take a super quick moment to smash, smash, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And now let's move on over and talk about Kyle Rittenhouse's new initiative. Actually, before we move on over to the next segment, I wanted to introduce the sponsor of today's episode, which is an awesome company called My Patriot Supply. So if you're looking at people's bank accounts getting frozen and now they're unable to buy food, if you're looking at this looming war with Russia, send the price of oil to the moon. And if you're seeing the supply chain crunch with ships being unable to dock at the LA port and you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, will this eventually impact the amount of food that I can actually buy at the store shelves? Well, the time to prepare for that eventuality is now. And I would highly recommend that you go on over to preparewithroman.com, which is the awesome website that, that you set up for us. And you can buy long-term emergency food now in case of a worst case scenario. And best of all, for our viewers, they have a special going on where you can save $50 off of their four week emergency food kit. That will give you breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks for one person for four solid weeks. 
So again, head on over to preparewithroman.com and save $50 off of each of the four-week food kits that you order. Now, by the way, My Patriot Supply is a phenomenal company to do business with. They have served literally millions of people across this country, and now those people are prepared for the worst-case scenario. And furthermore, their products are in stock, they ship quickly, and they ship discreetly. So if you head on over to preparewithroman.com and you order today, well, your product will arrive in three days or less in unmarked boxes so your neighbors don't know that you're prepping. So again, head on over to preparewithroman.com, save some money, get ready, and let's head on back to the studio. And now let's move on over and talk about defamation. And to start with, you might remember Mr. Kyle Rittenhouse. He is the young man who, in August of 2020, shot and killed two other men in self-defense during a riot in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And even though the outcome of his highly publicized trial was that he was acquitted of all charges, well, there have been celebrities, athletes, as well as organizations which have continued to call him a murderer as well as a white supremacist. However, it looks like Mr. Rittenhouse is now fighting back. Two days ago, during an interview over on Fox News, Kyle announced his new initiative, the Media Accountability Project, which he described as a group which will be used to hold members of the media accountable for both lies as well as for defamation. Now, Kyle himself is uniquely positioned to both launch the initiative as well as to hold people accountable for lies, slander, and defamation. That's because you might remember that after the riot in Kenosha and even during his trial, there was a lot of misinformation floating around regarding Kyle Rittenhouse, and much of it was being propagated by academics, media personalities, news outlets, athletes, and even politicians. For instance, back in November, on CBS News' Face the Nation, one of their reporters, they falsely stated that Kyle drove in from Illinois armed for battle, which is not true. Then over on CNN's Cuomo Primetime, a Harvard University professor, he came on and said that Kyle was carrying an AK-47, which was also not true. Then the independent newspaper, they reported that Kyle Rittenhouse had shot three black men, which again is not true. All the men he shot were white. And the list goes on and on and on. There was even a history book recently published by the National Geographic. It was titled The Good Kings, Absolute Power in Ancient Egypt and the Modern World. And within the book, well, here's what the author wrote regarding Mr. Kyle Rittenhouse. Or consider 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse, who used a semi-automatic weapon to kill two black men in Kenosha, Wisconsin, while waging a glorious race war on behalf of his inherited white power. Now, by the way, that last quote actually came from a history book. And so you can see there are many, many many examples like this. In fact, you have probably come across several of them for yourself. And therefore, as a response, Kyle Rittenhouse has launched the aforementioned Media Accountability Project. Here's how he described it. Quote, My trial exposed a deep corruption in our media that cannot go unanswered. Their blatant lies, defamation, and propaganda were malicious attempts to tear our nation apart and destroy my life, and I am committed to holding them accountable. Me and my team have decided to launch the Media Accountability Project as a tool to help fundraise and hold the media accountable for the lies they said and deal with them in court. And then, in terms of who is actually going to be on that list, well, Kyle said that the list will be fairly comprehensive and that they will go after everyone who lied about him. Here's what he said. We're looking at quite a few politicians, celebrities, athletes. Whoopi Goldberg is on the list. She called me a murderer after I was acquitted by a jury of my peers. She went on to still say that, and there's others. So is Sank Uyghur from the Young Turks. And so we will now have to see how these defamation cases will actually play themselves out in court, and also whether these lawsuits, as well as the existence of this media accountability project, will have the news outlets in this country work on triple checking their facts before publishing a story. Sometimes the only way to actually enact change is through the courtroom. Regardless, if you'd like to read more about Kyle's new initiative, I'll throw a link to it. It'll be in the description box below this video for you to check out. And again, all I ask in return is that if you haven't already, take a quick moment to smash, smash, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Now, to finish up, I would like to mention something that you might have noticed. Two days ago, our premiere on YouTube, well, it met with a bit of a challenge. When we uploaded the video, but before it actually premiered, YouTube took it down, and on the back end, they sent me a message saying that I was propagating medical misinformation. They gave me a warning, and then they gave me a strike, saying I cannot publish on my YouTube channel for a week. Now, fortunately, I appealed the decision. I sent them in a lengthy explanation saying, hey, I was just literally reading the CDC's own statement regarding how, by the way, they were spending about $5,000 per person in order to convince minorities in order to get vaccinated. And eventually, we, the appeal went through, and we were allowed to post again, which is why you're able to watch this episode. However, during that hour, when I was not able to post, and I really thought that we had lost the channel for at least the next week, I was beginning to think about what it actually means to be deplatformed, what it means to be, as George Orwell famously wrote, depersoned. Because when YouTube takes away my ability to speak to you, the audience, well, 
you don't even know about it. It's not like I can post anything saying, hey, I've been deplatformed because I can't post anything. And so you just maybe assume that I'm sick or I'm not posting or I maybe quit the channel. You have no idea. Of course, I posted on Instagram, but not so many people follow me. Although if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, you can find me at Epic Times Roman. I'm on there until they kick me off. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is because over on epictv.com, we have an awesome platform that does not have any censorship on there and that we can talk about things as they truly are without having to filter it for YouTube. And starting next week, I'm going to go and actually follow the trucker protest that's making its way to DC, the Freedom Convoy that's making its way to DC here in the United States. We're going to be there. We're going to be interviewing the truckers. We're going to be following the trucks. We're going to actually have drones. Perhaps we'll even rent an airplane to have an aerial view. We're going to be there telling you exactly what's happening from the ground. However, my experience is that protests like that, they do not fare well on YouTube because let's say somebody says something about the vaccine that the fact checkers here on YouTube don't like and the entire video gets taken down, even though let's say the video is five hours long. If somebody says something for just five seconds, well, the video can be either, well, demonetized, we're already demonetized, but the entire thing can be taken down. And so all the coverage that we will have of the trucker protest, well, you can find it over on Epic TV. And I hope you go on over there because that's not only a great way to support the journalism, but it's a great way to actually figure out what's happening in this world. There's a ton of other videos on there besides Facts Matter. There's great movies on there. There's exclusive programs that you can only find on Epic TV. And frankly, again, by subscribing, you will be supporting our journalism here at the Epic Times, which allows us to spread well, spread the facts, spread with the actual reality that's happening in this country to ever more households. I'll throw a link to Epic TV. You can try a month for just a single dollar, see if you like it. And if you do, well, I hope you continue. I hope you subscribe. And I hope that even further you spread it with your friends and family so that more and more people will know what's actually happening in this world. Now, again, hit that like button if you haven't already so that the algorithm here on YouTube can spread this video to more people. Subscribe to this YouTube channel while it's still available so that you can get updates like this on YouTube. Again, the links to Epic TV will be right there in the description box below. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed and stay free.